Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar on addressing the opioid epidemic. It's a team effort. My name is Amanda Bridges, and I'm with the Great Plains Quality Innovation Network, and I'm the task lead for the Kansas team on our Medicare medication safety and care coordination team. Great Plains Plan is the Quality Innovation Network Quality Improvement Organization for Kansas, Nebraska, North Dakota, and South Dakota. We aim to achieve better health care, improved health, safer care, and lower health care costs. I'd like to welcome and thank our audience for participating today. We are fortunate to have representation from a diverse mix of partners and stakeholders from our four-state region. Today's webinar will be recorded and posted to our website, greatplainsken.org. Please note it will take three to five business days to be able to access the recording. There will be an opportunity for questions after today's presentation, or you can always post questions in the chat function on the bottom right side of the screen. We'll be monitoring the chat feature throughout today's WebEx session. I want to take a minute to talk about the Great Plains Plan work related to medication safety. We work with partners across our four states to improve medication safety with a focus on adverse drug events and acute care utilization related to opioids, diabetic agents, and anticoagulants in alignment with the National Action Plan for Adverse Drug Event Prevention. As you can see by the data on this slide, adverse drug events have a serious impact on health and health care. Great Plains Plan is committed to improving medication safety. We accomplish this through a variety of means, including hosting learning and action events such as this. You can be kept up to date by joining our learning and action network on the Great Plains Plan website. All are welcome. Um, the LAN is a wonderful opportunity to stay connected and be made aware of new tools and resources when they become available. In addition, in Kansas, the Kansas Foundation for Medical Care is in the process of creating a community opioid toolkit with a variety of resources that can be implemented across a community to address the opioid epidemic from multiple angles. Resources will include a drug take-back event toolkit, provider resources such as prescribing guidelines and sample patient agreements, consumer education, and policy recommendations for emergency departments, urgent care clinics, and primary care clinics. We hope to have a full set of resources available by the end of this year. As part of our commitment to provide a learning and action network, we have today's event introducing our upcoming series on addressing the opioid epidemic. Today's objectives are to understand the need for a community approach to address the opioid epidemic. We're going to describe the five pillars identified in North Dakota. Um, by the Pharmaceutical and Narcotics in Our Community Task Force. And we're going to introduce the Great Plains Clan Medication Safety and Learning and Action Network Series. We're all aware of the opioid epidemic and have seen many statistics showing its impact. That being said, let's take a few minutes to review some of this data to understand the need to address our opioid challenges at multiple points in our community. Drug overdose is the leading cause of accidental death in the United States. Opioids are the primary contributor, accounting for two-thirds of all drug overdoses. To further break that down, 40% of all overdoses are related to prescription pain relievers, and 25% are related to heroin. Prescription opioids are often a gateway to heroin abuse. Over 80% of heroin users report using prescription opioids for non-medical purposes prior to initiation of heroin. These numbers help demonstrate that our current practices and culture have led to an increased utilization of narcotics, both legal and illegal, resulting in drug abuse, addiction, and overdoses. Um, on this chart, you can see that natural opioid analgesics, which includes medication like morphine and codeine, and semi-synthetic opioid analgesics, including drugs such as oxycodone, hydrocodone, hydromorphone, and oxymorphone, are all under the natural opioid and semi-synthetic category. 
Um, methadone is the gray line marker, and that's just a synthetic opioid that's frequently used in medication-assisted treatment. Um, other synthetic opioid analgesics include drugs such as tramadol and fentanyl. And then you can see on this chart that heroin is an illicit or illegally made opioid synthesized from morphine that can be white or brown or black, a white or brown powder or a black sticky substance. Illegal drug manufacturers are now frequently adding fentanyl to heroin, which is increasing the number of overdose deaths. Let's now look at some characteristics of hospitalizations, not deaths, associated with opioids. We see some consistency within the Great Plains Pen, but variation from the U.S. average. A review of all 50 states shows much variation between the states and the regions of the country, as well as variation within the states themselves. It's important to remember that the opioid crisis affects people of all ages and all walks of life. However, in the Great Plains region, older adults are hospitalized more frequently than any other age group. Let's look a little closer at the 65-plus age group within Great Plains Plain. This graph compares acute care utilization, that's hospital admissions, observation stays, and emergency department visits, to Medicare fee-for-service consumers taking an opioid along with at least two other medications. This graph compares 2014 to 2016. The black line is the average rate for all Medicare consumers, and the graph shows Medicare beneficiaries taking opioids are three times more likely to utilize acute care compared to overall, the overall Medicare population, and that this rate continues to increase. Adverse drug events are a major contributor to this increased utilization and are another contributor to our opioid epidemic. Within the Great Plains, our opioid hospitalization rates are very similar to the national average, which differs from our overall Medicare population utilization which typically averages less than the national average. We have room for improvement within the Great Plains Plan. Let's take a quick look at the supply of opioids. Sales of prescription opioids in the United States nearly quadrupled from 1999 to 2014, but there has not been an overall change in the amount of pain Americans report. During this time period, prescription opioid overdose deaths increased in correlation to the increase in opioid prescriptions and sales. The good news is that the rates have peaked nationally in 2012, and we're starting to see some improvement across the board. But even with the decrease from 2012 to 2016, opioid prescription rates remain high. An estimated one out of five patients with non-cancer pain or a pain-related diagnosis are prescribed opioids in an office-based setting. The sighting rates vary widely across different states and counties. On this slide, the darker the spot, the higher the rate. White spots do not necessarily mean more rates. On this bracket, means that we didn't have enough data in those counties. These type of sighting rates contribute to our current situation. Our less than judicious use of opioids has contributed to overuse and the negative outcomes we just outlined earlier. In addition, overprescribing leads to an oversupply of dispensed medications in our communities. This oversupply adds to the ease of drug diversion. The excess doses supplied for potentially legitimate reasons, reasons unfortunately are being misused by others. Our current use of opioids and pain management practices are a shaky house of cards in which just one of these negative outcomes can cause the whole house to topple. Unfortunately, unlike the image of the pile of cards on this slide, there is no ace in the hole that can magically save us from this situation. Each of these negative outcomes needs to be addressed from multiple directions. We need to treat those currently abusing opioids. We need to reduce adverse drug events and those with a need for opioids and improve prescribing practices and decrease the supply of opioids in the community. It's going to take a community-level approach involving partners from all settings, such as healthcare, public health, law enforcement, government, and the 
community to address this issue. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jamie Stegg, who will tell us about the work North Dakota has been doing to address the opioid crisis. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, as, as Amanda stated, instead of a, a house of cards, we need a strong structure that will address the current opioid epidemic and provide a solid foundation to prevent it from recurring. Uh, North Dakota has taken some, some steps to do this, and we'd really like to uh, take the next few minutes here to share uh, their approach and, and the pillars they have identified uh, to address uh, this issue. So in 2015, North Dakota found itself face to face with the, the opioid epidemic. Uh, overdose deaths in the state had tripled from 2013 to 2015. Uh, individuals at uh, North Dakota Human Service Centers were reporting heroin uh, use had increased over 1,000 percent, that's tenfold, uh, in those same two years. Uh, so in response, the Reducing Pharmaceutical Narcotics in Our Communities Task Force was formed. Uh, it is a group of over 40 public and private organizations, including the medical community, law enforcement, treatment services, educators, policy makers, and others gathered to address this public health concern. Uh, it works closely with the State Department of uh, Human Services Behavioral Health Division and is co-chaired by uh, healthcare policy experts. Uh, the group's goals are similar to those seen in national plans and in other areas of the, the region and country. Uh, they include uh, decreasing access to uh, unused or unneeded prescription drugs, uh, increasing infrastructure and capacity to provide effective services for individuals uh, with an addiction, and then increasing evidence-based uh, overdose prevention uh, within the state. So again, it's, it's focusing, it's trying to focus on the, the many issues uh, in helping those that uh, have a problem while also working to um, prevent uh, future uh, problems as well. So in order to accomplish these goals, uh, the task force identified five pillars. Uh, these pillars are education, drug take back, law enforcement, prescription drug monitoring programs, and treatment. This approach aligns with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services National Five Point Strategy, uh, which includes uh, one, improving access to prevention, treatment, and recovery services, including uh, medication assisted treatment, two, targeting availability and, and distribution of overdose reversing drugs, three, strengthening our strengthening our understanding of the crisis through better public health data and reporting, for providing support for research on pain and addiction, and five, advancing better practices for pain management. You can see some, some overlap um, between the state and national um, goals. So in North Dakota, a work plan was developed uh, around these pillars to address the opioid issue. Uh, for, the, for the education pillar, uh, um, this, this really is, is looking at both public and uh, healthcare professionals and, and providing education for that, for both of them. For the public, this includes promoting the Stop Overdose Campaign from the Department of Human Services. Uh, for healthcare professionals, it includes increasing use of, of best practice for pain treatment and abuse. In addition, in August of last year, uh, a statewide opioid symposium were held uh, that reviewed opioid prescribing practices, access to naloxone, and effective treatment and recovery practices. 
the symposiums were held at two different locations in the state and had uh, combined attendance of, of well over 200 individuals representing public and private partners and stakeholders. When we look at the, the Take Back Program pillar, that uh, encompasses uh, targeted and statewide communication of programs available uh, and also expansion of those programs, including uh, a program from the Attorney General and another from the Board of Pharmacy. Uh, these two programs, which provide uh, North Dakota with 24 hours a day, seven days a week, access to um, take back programs and proper drug disposal uh, will be a part of our focus call next month that we'll have uh, regarding uh, our medication safety learning and action network. For the law enforcement pillar, uh, this includes Education and enhancing policies uh, on things such as the Good Samaritan laws in North Dakota, providing protections for those seeking medical attention for others, uh, as well as supporting uh, the law enforcement uh, carrying of naloxone and having that available for, for their use. Uh, the Prescription Drug Monitoring Program pillar looks at collaborating with the state's prescription drug monitoring program to increase utilization of the program through awareness and supporting policies to promote increased use and best practices. Uh, one of these including uh, guidelines from the various healthcare professional boards uh, regarding um, best practice and use of the PDMP. And the final pillar is treatment uh, with the primary goal of increasing medication-assisted treatment within the state uh, and, and also as part of this increasing public access to naloxone. So uh, a variety of pillars or these pillars were, were put to work in developing this work plan. Um, and, and through that, uh, the task force has been successful in strengthening its pillars and, and building this strong structure to um, continue its work and address the issue within the state. So looking at some of the accomplishments the task force has made is, is the state has expanded access to naloxone through changes to allow pharmacist dispensing as, as well as through sharing of programs and uh, grants that uh, various partners within the task force have received to help reduce acquisition costs for naloxone. Policies were supported to further clarify Good Samaritan laws in the state during the last legislative session, as, as well as um, support was provided to um, enact rules to allow for needle exchange program within the state. And as we'll see on the next slide, the prescription drug monitoring program has seen an increase in the number of requests uh, with a request made to the system, the number of queries made to the system, uh, with, a, with a subsequent decline in the number of opioids prescribed in the state. And as we'll learn more, uh, about on our October 10th uh, webinar, uh, North Dakota has expanded take-back programs to include uh, disposal at uh, many local community pharmacies during their business hours, as well as uh, access to 24-7 disposal at law enforcement departments across the state. And finally, the state has gone from <coughs> zero approved uh, opioid treatment programs to now having three programs while continuing to work to increase that number. Uh, in addition to these uh, outpatient treatment programs, uh, they've also seen an 
increase in the number of authorized uh, Suboxone treatment practitioners within the state. So in, in just a, a few years, there, there has been progress made um, in, in addressing this issue within the state. I want to, this is just one little short little visual to show some of that progress that's made. Uh, the graph on the left shows the number of narcotic prescriptions that dispensed per quarter um, through our prescription drug monitoring program. And we can see a, a, a nice uh, drop has, has occurred uh, starting in 2016. And then on the flip side of that, we look at the number of requests being made per day, and we can see an, an increase in uh, those numbers of requests. So, so this just kind of demonstrates some of the progress that's being made in, in one of our, our states within the Great Plains and, um, and, and how it also relates back to the national strategy and looks at the opioid issue from multiple perspectives, um, really getting back to being driven at the uh, community level, and it takes the entire community to address this, this issue. So now that we've kind of reviewed these five pillars and, and, and introduced the topic to you, we, we'd like to take the last few minutes of this webinar here today to introduce our upcoming Medication Safety Learning and Action Series and, and how we're going to build on this presentation today uh, moving forward. So uh, this series will involve 30-minute um, calls over the noon hour. We've done this in an attempt to uh, allow as many participants as possible. Uh, we will try and do these uh, on Tuesdays, and uh, we're looking to do uh, one to two of these calls a month. And uh, one event will feature an educational webinar, such as today, where we'll have the presenters speaking. And then that will be followed later, uh, a, a few weeks later, with a coaching call, um, really designed to have the, the subject matter experts that present will will be on this coaching call that will allow for more um, direct one-on-one -on -one communication and discussion and, and sharing. And so we're really looking to engage everyone and to have you um, share on these coaching calls. Uh, we will feature experts from throughout the Great Plains uh, states and looking for to have them share their expertise and knowledge on the programs and opportunities available to all of us to, to diverse settings across our four states. And for the next few months, our initial focus is going to be opioids and taking a deeper look into uh, these five pillars to address the epidemic. However, in the future, we will also be developing events around the safe use of anticoagulants and diabetic agents. So looking ahead for the next few months, we have uh, our events lined up. In October, we are going to focus on the Take Back program pillar. And uh, we will have a webinar like this on October 10th, followed uh, the following week with a coaching call. And we will have uh, Mike Schwab from the North Dakota Pharmacists Association join us, as well as um, Krista Mercado uh, from Kansas to talk about a community uh, take back program that um, they've implemented there. And then in November, we are going to have, uh, and in December, we are going to focus on best practices around utilizing prescription drug monitoring programs. Uh, we're looking forward to having representatives from each of the four Great Plains states uh, participating on those calls, and um, they will be um, we'll be having a, um, a roundtable discussion with them regarding the PDM programs within their state. 
And then in 2018, we will work on addressing uh, the other pillars as well. And more information will be coming. So please um, keep an eye on your inbox for email announcements as well as um, utilizing looking at our upcoming events on the Great Plains Quinn website. We invite you to visit the Great Plains website at greatplainsqin.org for resources pertaining to medication safety and opioids, as well as other initiatives being led uh, by the Great Plains Quinn. Uh, also, please join our Learning and Action Network if you are not currently a member, as this will um, allow you to receive notifications on future educational opportunities that we are offering. Now, at the last few minutes, we would like to invite any questions that individuals have. Um, the conference is now in question and answer mode. You can ask those via chat again um, in the lower right-hand corner of your uh, webinar here, um, or you can um, ask them by unmuting yourself by pressing star six on your keypad um, on your phone, and then um, you can ask your questions and, and then use star six. Uh, to, to mute yourself again. So at this time, we'll open it up to any questions if you have them. Okay. Uh, hearing none, um, we ask all attendees to complete the evaluation form for today's event to offer us feedback and help us plan and coordinate future events. Uh, we want to ensure we are meeting the needs of our uh, partners. Your input is important. Uh, please use the evaluation to provide us with feedback on the types of topics you want us to address through this upcoming series. Uh, the link is above for the evaluation, and it will also appear at the conclusion of today's webinar when you exit the WebEx event. Uh, if you do have additional questions or want to follow up with anyone, um, here are uh, contact, here's contact information for uh, the leads within each of the four Great Plains Quinn States, and, and please feel free to reach out uh, to us for any um, assistance uh, or with any questions that you may have. Um, thank you for your participation today and for joining us. We hope you found this information valuable and applicable, and we look forward uh, to our upcoming uh, events that will really um, dive into more of the, the finer details uh, in addressing the opioid epidemic. Uh, this concludes our webinar. Thank you, everyone. The conference is now in private host conference mode. You may press a star four zero to reactivate the general conference. All righty. You did it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And um, we will talk to you here shortly. We ended right on time, so that worked out well. Good job. Good job, guys. Yep. Bye. Have a good day. You too.